Welcome back. In this lesson, I'll cover the origins and development of pulp magazines and science fiction magazines and their importance to the development of superhero comic books. By the end of this lesson, you'll have a good understanding of the development of pulp magazines, the development of science fiction magazines, and why these magazines were important to the development of comic books. There are two reasons for looking at pulp magazines for the origins of comic books. The publishing form. That is, pulps were a relatively cheap publication on cheap paper. And the characters. Pulps had heroes. The pulps were basically cheap short story magazines. Pulps were called pulps because they were printed on a cheap wood pulp paper. They began to develop at around the same time as comic strips in the mid-1890s. Pulps were a development from an earlier, cheaper form of magazine or magazine-like publication called dime novels. Here is a link that will let you view many dime novel covers. One important difference between the pulps and dime novels was the different types of stories. At the turn of the 20th century, that is around 1900, the United States of America was becoming a more urban country than a rural country. Cities had grown at a rapid pace. For instance, New York City grew from a population of around 340,000 in 1840 to 3,437,202 by 1900. Don't forget those last two people, they're very important. The sort of population growth and the change from rural to urban life changed the sort of concerns people had. It also changed the sort of entertainment they wanted. Sometimes this change to a more urban-based life and the associated cultural changes are called modernity. The difficulties people had with adapting to this change are called the problems of modernity. There are whole fields of the arts like literature, plays, dance and painting that respond to these problems. But these are not topics of immediate relevance to this course. So pulps contain stories that appeal to an increasing urban or city-based population. What sort of stories were these? Two important sort of stories developed. One sort showed the concerns of people living in cities with crime, and the other had a sort of nostalgia for earlier times, or at least the way people imagined earlier times. So there were detective stories, and what I'd refer to as Tarzan-type stories. The first sort of story is understandable. People living in large cities found themselves living among people they did not know. Unlike in small towns, the people living around them were a bit of a mystery. When a crime was committed, someone with special skills was required to work out who might have committed the crime. Someone who could make sense of the city. So the figure of the detective emerged, and the detective did not just solve crime, it's the way they solved it. They were problem solvers. The second sort of story might seem strange at first. But people living in cities and working in offices and department stores and other such occupations wanted to be reminded of more physical activities and the like. So there were many stories of muscular heroes, often set in jungle settings, where the hero demonstrated their strength. There were racial dimensions to many of these stories. The heroes were often white. Here's a key point. The magazine formats of pulps were important to the development of comic book superheroes. Another key point, key point two. The heroes in pulps were important to the development of comic book superheroes. There are two types of heroes, detectives helping solve problems and physically powerful men superior to those around them. Now, of course, there are problems with this. Some of the heroes that appeared in the pulps included the Continental Op, a detective. Op is short for operative. Tarzan, the white man in the jungle hero, and Doc Savage. 
Science fiction magazines developed as a type of pulp magazine. Although science fiction stories predated its publication, the magazine Amazing Stories, established in 1926, helped shape science fiction as a particular genre. It is important to single them out because they offered a specific solution to the problems of modern life. That solution was science. The notion that science offered a solution to the perceived ills of modern life was everywhere. Look at this advertisement from 1913. In this ad, the added heat and stillness of air created in the canyons of a modern city where their high-rise building will be solved by science. See, here is the canyon, here's the high-rise building, and here's people looking down on that canyon. In this case, an electric fan, it's not very clear in this illustration, an electric fan will be the piece of science that helps bring the breeze into the city. Science fiction worked along these lines. Mostly the stories were cast in the future, when humanity faced some problem, and the answer to that problem lay with science. Often these stories involved some sort of adventure in space or the stars, depending on how a writer conceived the universe. The great science fiction heroes included Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon, one of my personal favorites, for obvious reasons. These heroes, in many ways, simply took the qualities of Tarzan and transferred them to space. Another science fiction hero, Doc Savage, was also a scientist. He was a real PhD, as well as a medical doctor. And he had many other important heroic qualities. So here's a key point, key point three. The pulps presented the reading public with an array of hero types whose powers and abilities were far greater than ordinary people. They paved the way for superhero comic books. This is the end of this lecture. This lecture had three key points. Review your notes and go back over the video lesson to ensure you have those three key points noted. Coming up, lesson 1.4, the origin of comic books.